If you love what we're doing on the Church Sound Podcast, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button. Review us on Apple Podcasts or whatever platform you listen on. Check out our YouTube channel. And if you want more information, go to our website, www.churchsoundpodcast.com. See you in the matrix. Welcome to the Church Sound Podcast, where kingdom culture, real life, and technology intersect. I'm your host, Prentice Thompson, along with the pastor, Caleb Winley. We're here to help you get through Sunday. Could you hear the pastor? What about your live streams, social media? We provide solid solutions for all of your multimedia needs. Let's learn something today. Let's go. Yes. Yes, yes. Welcome to another edition of the Church Sound Podcast. I'm your humble host, Mr. Prentice Thompson, along with the pastor... What's going on, y'all? How y'all doing? This is the pastor, Kayla Winley. What is happening? So happy to have you. He's stuttering because you got some company over there. He's stuttering because you got some company over there. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> those of you who are watching on YouTube, those of you who are listening listening to the show, yeah. this is a very special show. Um, I call it yeah. uh, Bring Your Wife to Work Sunday, but today is today's <laughs> Tuesday. But um, we have titled the show. Yeah. First of all, mm-hmm. our wives are here. Our, our, yeah, so our, this, our, this our better be, holes. Uh, you can't say halves. Our better holes are here. <laughs> and all of a sudden, my mouse is just acting crazy. Okay, there you go. Our better holes are here. Not holes. I mean, <laughs> holes. <laughs> I had to clarify. H. That's H. with an H. I'm out start right with a start with a W <laughs> W H O F. Oh my oh. god. Holes. Hole. Hole. A hole. Hey, a hole. Right. And, so we got another, another and member. we got another one in the in the picture. Little Joshua. Who I haven't even held yet. Lord Jesus. I get, anyway, welcome to the come. show, everyone. This is the episode number. 31 and this 31, is the bro. new year's show and like yeah, i said yeah. we have our wives on the show today so um ladies introduce yourselves yeah, yeah. who you be i'm joy i'm like uh Joshua. <laughs> i'm deborah and i'm the wife of prentice yep yes so now you see I call I call it wife takeovers. You know, bring your wife to work day. They uh-huh. labeled it crazy men, yeah, yeah. crazy media men, and the and the, and yeah, the yeah. women that love them, which is so right. true because you have to be completely off your rocker to do this. So before we get started, we want to yeah. thank our sponsor, Metro Podcast Studio, the hottest podcast studio in New York City. If you need your needs done, yeah. podcast done, on recording, live stream, video editing, post production, we can handle it for you. Hit them up, MetroPodcastStudio.com for all of your media needs. But like we do every show, we have this thing that we call Sunday School. Come on. Okay, class, it's time. Time for Sunday School. I don't want to go. Get me on. Come on. Stop. Yes, so. Today I'm the pastor. Today I'm the minister at hand. Today I'm bringing the word of God. Amen. Word of God. Amen again. Yes. Amen. And I have, Amen. I have, I have, I have three me. topics, and the the people in the congregation has to pick. That will be Joy, Debbie, and Caleb. Caleb and the pastor. And the pastor Caleb has to pick. So therefore, my three points are. Point one is share and believe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Write it down. Mm-hmm. Chapter mm-hmm. one, verse mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. Low, that's low corny. Huh? Second, second, second point is it takes two. <laughs> Watch out now. It takes two. <laughs> Make it up. Third to do what? Is, <laughs> to do what? <laughs> third point is to do anything. Woman power. <laughs> Woman I'm gonna go ahead and go with that because you know I'm a girl. Woman power. 
you, you got That's the whole it. hand thing, brother. Like, hold it up, woman power. Woman power, power. Yeah. Woman okay. power. Okay. Woman power. I, I feel like it. if I go the other direction, it ain't gonna make a difference anyway. So woman power. Woman power it is. Okay. People have chosen woman power, so the woman power for 350. Okay. <laughs> so this story goes back to being in a storefront church in Harlem. I must have been about 13, 14 years old, tops. Tops 14, maybe 12 or 13. And my mother at the time, um, my cousin came over to, to hang with us for the weekend. And if you know anything about the Pentecostal church, oh yeah, they got 15 oh, wow. services in the first service on into three o'clock. Exactly. So it's one of them, you know, and I was a musician, so you no, know, they shout for an hour, preach for two hours. This is a testimony service. This is all that stuff. This old school church, old school church, all right? Now, I want to put a caveat on this. My mother, God rest her soul, was a really strong woman. I don't mean just in the Lord. Okay. I mean physically. Oh. I mean, <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm going to break something down. This is, this is kind of embarrassing. This is kind of embarrassing. I'm going to say it now. Gonna reveal it. I could not beat my mother arm wrestling until I was like 20. <laughs> wow. What? I'm talking what? like. Uh, I can't find I never even tried. <laughs> I, I, okay, I so this, this 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 little note in there. Okay, so my cousin, my cousin Byron, shout out to my cousin Byron. Debbie knows Byron. And at the time, at the time right now, Byron is bigger than everybody. Brown okay. about 6'3", six, 6'4", six, Brown about 240, 245, and at 14, wow. he was about 210 wow. and about 6'2". Okay, so he was wow. a little, a big and dude. I was. So, <laughs> after in between service, you know, morning and the after, afternoon, because it ended in the afternoon, not the afternoon, afternoon service. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, after, after. He decides he is his mama told him he could go home. And he's okay. he he's gonna tell Aunt Mildred, I'm leaving. Oh okay. and Aunt so, Mildred is your mother. Yes. And so she, she was like, That ain't what your mother told me. Your mother said that you were staying here all day and she was gonna pick you up at the house. I'm leaving. I don't care what you gotta say, Aunt Mildred. And the next thing I know, now the picture this. We on we on the we on the aisle, in the aisle, in a row of seats. All I saw was my mother grab him and throw him. What? <laughs> I'm talking like <laughs> grab him one arm, not two. One arm, grab him and throw him to the wall. Blah. <laughs> and then you stay there. And you stay there. You don't come and out of that room that I say so. Woman I, power. I, that's not like my kind of girl. Woman what? power. Woman okay. power. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. The, the moral of the story is, in my life, I think I got like four beatings. Stops. Because I wasn't trying to play with that lady. Not only was she a prophet. <laughs> Don't blame you, brother. And strong in the Lord. She was Lord. strong in the physical. Strong in the physical. Listen, you ain't right. <laughs> Listen, my mom, my mom was the mother. My mom was the auntie that came to <laughs> Your house and fix your house. Oh wow! And I got I had like okay. at the time like ten aunts okay. and uncles, 12, 13 aunts and uncles. Uh -huh. My mother mm. showed up at mm. your house to fix your house. <laughs> wow! Right. She was like super nanny before. She super was nanny. super nanny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, if you go to the family reunion, they'd be like, my cousin be like, Aunt Mildred, your mama. Be like, yeah, oh, man, you don't get away with nothing. I said, I don't want to get away with nothing. <laughs> It is too mm -hmm. painful. It is too painful. Yeah, yeah, so there yeah. it is. Yeah, Some yeah. school ladies sure. and boys and girls, cats and dogs of all ages. Wow. Dope, dope. That was dope. Now you see why I'm the way I am, Caleb. I see. I see. Now you see. <laughs> now you see. <laughs> now you, now you kind of understand. It's um, crystal, brother. <laughs> Trust me. Yes, I have the, the I have the woman power with me. Wow. Yes, I had all time. Power. But this is all crazy day. men. And the wives that love them. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
We're going to turn the show over to the ladies. There it is. Turn it over. We're going to let y'all rock. We're going to let y'all rock. Y'all got nothing to say? Y'all talk a whole lot. We do, but I'm a guest on your show. Oh, here we go. There it is. There it is. Okay. There it is. I was trying to see what you're going to do. So I got so I got a question. question. What'd you say? She said, I don't go in the fridge. I said, yeah, but we got a mic. Right. So let's, let's, let's me tell okay. me to respond to the host. <laughs> right. Okay, right, so <laughs> my question to the ladies is... That means both of y'all. Both of y'all. Both, both of us. Okay. Mm-hmm. What have you learned about your men when it comes to working in church? Mm. I preface that. Working in church, yes. Can I be honest? Please do. No, okay. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Shame the devil. Shame Speak the devil. up. Speak <laughs> up. Um, I have learned that. Here we go. My husband doesn't like to disappoint people. Okay. So okay. he will say yes, even if it means it's taken away from other areas. So he'd be like, oh, okay, we're about to go do such and such, babe. Let's go get something to eat. All right. And I turn around and he's like in 16 meetings because (laughs) (laughs) he's like, okay, one more, one more meeting because I got to help them get this together. I got to, like, he likes to help people do stuff (sighs) all the time. But sometimes it's like, bro, it's too much. Several seats. So true. Okay. What what have you learned from media? What have we learned? Y'all crazy. <laughs> okay. Y'all do too much. You do too much? <laughs> Mrs. Thompson. Uh-oh. I've learned that there's no separation between business and church. That mm. you treat the, the, the sound people like you're in a business. Like this is not church. And so then that that's where the professionalism comes in because just because it's church just because it's church doesn't mean it's not supposed to be professional. Right. So I've learned that you bring that to the media. Oh, oh, that's good. Oh, look at y'all. y'all. You know what I've I've learned? Um, I I would say during this past year is that. Media is so much more important than the church expected it to be. Oh yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah. It's it's it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's 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 so much more important. I think that pastors have realized that. Well, hopefully, I can't speak for all. Hopefully, pastors have realized <laughs> the important role that we play. Right, 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 right. and. And from the family side, I think that on the, from you look at the church to this family side, I think that us as media people, we have to mm-hmm. put a put a line in the sand about what we're doing and what we're not doing, right? Because right. our and ministry, right. our ministry is family first. It's God, yeah. family, job, church, right? And so you got to put a line in the sand and say no. No, I can't do that. And no, I'm not doing that. I've done that many times. Exactly. Um, yeah. So that's, I think that's what I've learned. But do you really think I, that they've learned that? Well, I think I don't that, think so. I'm, I hope, I hope, I pray that um, <laughs> some have learned it. But I could say that we as media people, we have to stand our ground. Right. Um, and not just be patsies. What I mean by patsies is if they want a green light on them and you know it looks horrible, then you shouldn't you shouldn't put a green light on them. Right. You should. Right. You should be right. and I think I think pastors need to get to the place where they trust their media people more. And right. I just think that it's it's every pastor is different, so it's kind of a work in progress. Um you have we have ones who are dog dog dogmatic. And you have ones that are listen, and hopefully the ones that fall in the middle, um, we learn from the ones at the top or the bottom of of the of the scale. 
that's, that's, that's the best description I can give. I think one of the things that I've learned is to um, know your worth as, as a media person. I think that's one thing that we don't sometimes always recognize and recognize that saying, like my wife said, saying yes to everything speaks more to a deficiency in you personally than it does to you trying to meet everybody's specific need, you know. But if you don't know your own worth, then you'll put the things that are truly worthy off to the side for the just so that you can feel better about doing with the, whether it be within the kingdom or anywhere anywhere for that for that matter right you know what i'm saying so i think that that's one thing that that this especially the pandemic has has kind of caused me to wake up and you know just kind of see the see the, the the truth for what it really is and recognize okay caleb you can't do it the way you used to do it that's not gonna work in this season knowing the seasons that's to come and people may not like it but that's all right it's okay right, right. you know what i'm saying Right. Yeah. Right. So let me ask y'all ladies. All right. So I noticed this, like if I'm in service, now Debbie can attest to this. If you walk into the church, any church, and the sound is like suspect. <laughs> what do you think? What's going on? What do you think is going on in my head, Mrs. Thompson? Do they not hear that? <laughs> 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 Do they not hear that? Like, what's going on? Because I'm like, what? Like, what? He's like, you don't hear that? I'm like, no, I don't. Like, why are you even listening for that? Because it's, 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 it's happening. Like, I hear that. Yeah. I'm like, they okay. They can't help it. <laughs> yeah, that's like, what's I, going on. I, I, like, I know with my husband, he starts to visibly, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And yeah, I've yeah. learned to hear certain things, not all things, but I've learned to hear like background <sighs> hums, like even over <sighs> other like if someone is talking, I can still pick up on like the background hum because he's taught me how to pick it up. Um and then even just like with um singing with praise and worship, like you'll be able to hear certain things that <laughs> you can ignore. But when those things start to happen, like my husband just starts yeah, the growl definitely starts. Yeah, yeah. And, he, and then his, his leg starts going, and he's like, "What is what?" Mm. And I'm just like, "But do you just do that in your ministry, or do you do that in every church?" He does every that in other places. places. Oh no, 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 no! I do that everywhere. He I does go. it everywhere. But see, but the, and I have my, to tell him it is we not at we not at home. Exactly. Now my biggest you problem is that I used to do this. I was doing this when I was DJing. <clears throat> so there's that. You know how DJs, we, we're competitive. You know what I'm saying? So you walk into a room or you go to a wedding and you're like, oh, okay, okay. He should play this song right after that. Now, now I'm yeah. sitting with my woman, <laughs> but I'm talking about you should, the song you should be playing. And then he put, why do you put, what is, why would you play? And, and my whole, everything is working. So now, now I'm all up against you. And sometimes I've gotten up and walked over and said, yo, bro, yo, why? Why don't you try um oh my <laughs> god oh, rock with yeah. this? Yeah, I've done it. I've yeah. done it. And so now you get trans it gets transported into the church oh. and now I'm hearing these things or I'm seeing something in this and I'm like, what is what Yo, is wrong with y'all? Y'all can't do we tell you something. I'll say that we went to, <laughs> we went to a wedding sometime oh ago. Oh gosh, help me God. And <laughs> the sound was trash. Yeah like trash and they had a dj and they had a band and it was just not working yeah and Um, it was it was bad enough for everybody to notice because it was just can't not notice like some like some of the mics are like high kind of high pitch or someone's singing and it's like well why does it's a man why does he sound like that like this is not blended well Uh and he the whole time is going oh <laughs> Who's doing that? <laughs> and I'm like, you're embarrassing me. Stop. <laughs> like, but nobody does yeah. that. And I'm like, and he's like, well, what if I'm? A, I said, no. If you get up and go over there, 
we are going to have a problem. Sit down and eat your food. Uh huh. You're not here for the. <laughs> Oh God! To be a guest. Yeah, I've done that, bro. Be I've done it. Oh, gosh, I've, I've done That's it. Yo, crazy. dude, and I know I'm, you have on it. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm the guy that W tell you this. I'm the guy. I don't care where we go. We could go to a concert because I'm because I'm a musician first. Sure. I'm looking at all the gear. They got this. They probably running that. Oh, they. they got oh my gosh! Yes. He was in that program. <laughs> oh look! Yes, oh, that's you it. got a pat. Okay, all right. So I see where that sounds coming from. They doing this. They doing that. Yeah. They got this. Okay. What symbol does he have? Oh, there's a Zildjian. Oh, there's a Zildjian. Oh no, that's a twenty-two. As I could pick out all the gear. But don't. <laughs> but don't just act like that's the only place you do that. When we're watching a show. Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh, oh! I see how they did that shot. Oh, I see how they did that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. I knew what they was going to do. That's, yo, that's awesome. Like, what? Like, why? <laughs> why are you critiquing right. the, you know, the professionals who have already Like, are you getting paid shot? for this, sir? I can't help it. part of us, though. I can't help it. I want to see, I, it's anything. Ever since, ever since I started be the filmmaker, I can pick shots mm. out. I know where they're ending. I know, okay, they use this gear. Oh, that's a dolly up shot. Okay, oh, they're gonna do a slot. Okay, they're gonna do, a, oh, they're gonna do a rack focus. And it's all part of the technology of, of creating. So yeah, it could be anything. I, I, yeah. Cause I, oh, yeah. you know what it is? I know where it comes from and I'm thinking about it. When I first started doing music, as a kid, before I started doing music, I used to take music apart. So I would listen okay. to a song and go, oh, that's an electric guitar, that's acoustic, that's a five string bass, that's an upright, that's a viol, that's a viola, that's a violin, that's a cello. Oh, that's a oh, that's a flugel horn. That's the so I learned to take music apart because I had because I had to learn how to put it back together. So that all okay. became a part of everything I do because now I take it all apart to put it back together. So gotcha, I guess yeah. that helps me out as an engineer because I'm able to hear music that way. But that's that's no, that my, does. That my does. inquisitiveness and my creativity. But are you able to enjoy the experience? No. I oh, you know, yes, I do. It depends on who it is. If 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 the band is hot, it can make me forget about the gear. You know the concert, Mary J. Blige. I wasn't thinking about no gear. Right, that's true. <laughs> I was thinking about no gear. My, yeah. me, my, me and Junior went to see um Anderson Pack. I was thinking about the beginning. I took I took it apart, and after that, I was like, "Oh nah, this is dope." <laughs> I ain't putting this, this, right this together fire together. right here. So, <laughs> if it's yeah, suspect, <laughs> if it's suspect, <laughs> if I'm at a church and it's suspect, bro, because remember, I used to be in church before I started engineering. I would text Caleb the changes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. I would text sure him. Hey, no, sure about two five or bump up two hundred on the microphone. He'd be like, "What?" <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, like, let's, uh, take the bass out the sub. Hey man, take sixty hertz out the sub. Man, it's too much. Yo, the top. Yo, pull pull three hundred. I'm I'm talking. You know, he's looking at. He probably think I'm talking Chinese, but I'm like, I'm thinking yeah. he could. I'm thinking he know the language. Like I know the language. And then finally, he said, "Why don't you just come back here and do it?" <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. You're passing all these messages, man. I'm like, we gonna stop playing this, brother. Get back here. And make it happen. <laughs> For sure. So, what, so what do you think? Since we all go to the same church, what do you think 2021 is gonna look like? Mm. I don't know. What um, early 2021 or late 2021? Let's say let's say you know what? Let's let's put a pin in it. Let's say June 2021. Say June. Mm. I think it will I think it'll be close to what it was before. Um I do I will say at the beginning of the pandemic, like when everybody was really starting to panic and they were shutting everything down and it was just like the media team going to the church just to do the streaming and nobody else was coming whatsoever. I was praying about it and I had a dream about the ending of it. 
And it was like a moment of jubilee where everybody was hugging, everybody was excited to come back, everybody missed each other. It was like a joyous moment. So I do believe that there's going to come a point where we can um, come back together and it be closer to normal. Everybody's using that term. Right. Um, I think there will be a lot of lessons that ha- will have been learned by then. So, um, so it's going to be different. Um, but I do think that there's going to be a point where everybody will be able to come back and fellowship closer to the way it was before. So what do you think the biggest lesson will be learned? I think... Both of you guys. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, think, think. I think that... Different according to the person. Um, I think for some of us, it's learning how to be a part of without physically being with people. Um, Some people are just, some people only function well when they're with other people. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think for those people, it's learning to be able to still fellowship with people, even though you're not with that person, so to speak. Somebody like myself, I'm a homebody anyway, so this, everybody's like, I'm tired of being in the house. I'm like, eh. <laughs> 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 All my things exactly. are here, so. Like, I'm tired of not being able to go out to eat, but I think that was that was about it. But, um, and I think for some people, it's, learning new technology. Um, I've noticed that there are some pastors on my timeline on Facebook who had to like learn trial by fire, like how to do a live on Facebook right, or right. how to do a live on Instagram or Periscope. Like this is something new to them. These are the same people that were like, oh, you can't just do Bedside Baptist. And now we're kind of forced to do Bedside Baptist. Right, right. So now how do you still engage and reach people? So they right. had to learn that by the seat of their so pants. Um, and then also learning that there's actually really nothing mm-hmm. wrong with virtual church. You have people that have issues that are not really able to make it out. Like if right. somebody has church hurt, but they still oh. love God and still want to hear the word, they just are afraid to be around the people. Um, you have some people who um, who have issues like agoraphobia, who love God, but are afraid to go outside and be around mm-hmm. people. So, you know, you got people who deal with all types of things and they deserve to be able to hear the word too. Absolutely. And not be watered down. And you can't just mm-hmm. leave the pastors that were quote unquote watered down, the only ones on the internet because they are young and they know how to use the internet. Um, so I think yeah. for some pastors, that was a major lesson. Um, it was a major lesson in hygiene, which I think is kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a health educator and I'm also slightly a germaphobe. So when people are talking about the way to combat those diseases, washing your hands for at least 20 seconds, and I'm going, who didn't wash their hands for 20 seconds? Like, I don't understand. Like, why does this have to be taught to adults? And then, but you realize there are so many people that don't wash their hands for 20 seconds. They just under the water real quick and that's it. And I'm like, yeah. That's nasty. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I, <laughs> <laughs> I think, oh, I'm not judging. I'm just saying. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah. I feel like for some people, it was a lesson in just things that we would take, some of us take for granted as quote unquote basic hygiene, but is these are things that are necessities. Like if you're, if you're at home even and you're cleaning chicken, you have to wash your hands for a certain amount of time in order to make sure your hands is cl- are clean before you touch something else and spread germs in your own house. So some people didn't know that, but that's a thing. Um, so I think it all, yeah. you know, it all depends on the person. Um, Deb? I think come June, I think that, I think people want it to go back to a semblance of normalcy, but I don't think that it is because I think that people have now learned their new normal. And a lot of times it's hard to unlearn the things that you most recently learned. And we've had a lot of time to practice this thing. You know, so every week is we're not going to church. Every week we're not going outside. Every week we're not getting on the subway. 
So I think right. when it's when you can do it, mm-hmm. I think that you're feeling, I think the feeling that you're gonna have is not gonna allow you just to jump right back into it. It's gonna be a whole big process of getting back into it. So, so um, just keep going. Keep going. <laughs> keep going. Hold on. Yeah. So <laughs> that's that's what I think. And I think that the lessons that they learned was I can't be a part if I'm not a part. You right. can or can't. Right. Can't. Can't be a part if I'm not a part. Because mm-hmm. some people, I think that they're not like they can only be a part if I'm in the building. Right, right. They're not and built so, the other way around. Right, uh-uh. right. You know, it's right. like some people join the church because it's a part of a gang. Yeah. You know, it's that camaraderie <laughs> thing. You know what I'm saying? This is right. where I get my fellowship from. This is where uh-huh. I get my meaning from, and my meaning is really connected to my friends as opposed to your meaning being connected to the kingdom and then friends become a part of that. And we, we, so we serve and we worship God around that. But I think that one thing that was revealed is that, that neediness that we have for that, just that wanting to be in a group as opposed to wanting to just, you know, really enjoy who, who God is and stuff in the seasons. I think, right. I think, mm-hmm. but I think just, just to answer the question, though, I think, knowing our ministry, I think that in June, like we were talking, like my, you know, my, my little uh, godson was talking about, you know, Liddy, I think it's going to be on like crazy. I, I think it's, I think it's going to be, ain't no stopping us now. We about to get it in. We about to run as hard as we possibly can run. And I think that I pray that cause I, and I've not only seen that in our ministry, but I've seen that in other churches where, They've been held back, or they feel like they've been held back for so long. Now it's and now it's on. We about to get it, and I don't know if that's the, I don't know if that's the way to do it. I think I think that we need to really rethink that. All right, so let me ask you this, Caleb. When it comes to you know technology, um, mm-hmm. or the ones who are technically challenged, okay, um. Who do you feel will adjust and leave behind digital? Who would that, what would that person sound like to you? Those, that person who would want to go back to normal and actually abandon the digital format? Mm. I, I think that falls more in the lap of more of a traditionalist. Mm-hmm. You know, individuals that kind of grew up in the, uh, I like to say good old boy or just that this is how we've always done it type thing. I think some of them tend to see this new place that we're in as temporary. You know, this is just for now. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we, we got to, y'all know, we go, y'all know once, once this is all over and y'all get your shot in the arm and everybody's doing good, we're going back to what we used to do. Don't, don't get stuck in this place. And the truth right. of the matter is mm-hmm. that there's nowhere else. You can't go back. In other words, I feel like there's nothing that you can go back to because to go back is to negate everything that God has revealed in this particular time. So it takes a, a an individual that's, really staunch to be in that. And it's funny because I, I, I actually had to correct, I'm not going to say who this pastor was, huge though, huge pastor of a huge movement. He posted something and I had to literally, I, I, I just felt the Holy Spirit was like, you, you got to say something. And I told him, I said, bro, you wrong. You wrong. I, I understand who you are. I said, and the fact that you would respond this way to this particular leader is wrong because we have been called to pray for leadership. We haven't been called to destroy leadership. We haven't been called to do those things. And when you represent the amount of people that you represent, you have to be mindful of what your opinion, your opinion, not your truth, what your opinion can do. Mm. You know, so those are the type of people that are going to be fighting to get back to, oh, come on now. We're going to, people got to come back to church. Mm. No, no. It's nice. No. I mean, the word says not to forsake 
the the gathering, but mm-hmm. you also have mm-hmm. to the people where you're at. Right. You know, that what what does that mean for the person who is not able to get off of work? They're right. a single mother, a single father carrying all the bills by themselves. They can't take the time off to go to church. Do they just not get work? Mm-hmm. No, you have to find a way to feed them. Right. Um, you know, I think the person that's gonna go back or try to go back to that type of thing is someone with who is old. And when I say old, I mean like old in mindset, not necessarily in age, because I know yeah. some mm-hmm. older people who are very forward thinking. Right. Um, and if they're right. not forward thinking themselves, they surround themselves with people who are forward thinking to help push things along right, because right. they know you can't get stuck in yep. old patterns. Um, you have some people, I know some people, I've even Facebook friends, real, that I've people that I know in real life, I was shocked in the beginning of this um, pandemic where they were posting things like, we got to get the church back open. People are people out here dying and da 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 And I'm like, and so we're going to open up the church and expose people to more sickness? I don't, I don't, I don't understand the mindset behind that. And um, somebody mm-hmm. was like, you know, well, people are homeless and they can't get on the internet on Facebook or whatever to, and I'm like, okay, not for nothing. And I'm, I'm not saying that homeless people are not welcome in church, but but they wasn't coming into church. There you go. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) They should have been first called churchless before homeless, but anyway. Right. So these people, (laughs) people who the homeless population are not necessarily going to walk into the doors of a church in the first place. Right. One, because as a homeless person, they feel a lot of shame and condemnation. So they're going to stay away um, for the most part from people who they feel like are going to judge them. And unfortunately, Mm -hmm. the church has a history of making statements and making people who are quote unquote less than feel less than, and that's That's not the way of God. So if you want to reach the homeless then do what you should have been doing anyway, go and outreach the homeless. Go to where they are. And that's what I said. Right. You meet them where they're at. If if you see the same person in the same train station every single week, he is not getting up and going to a Beulah Baptist church on your block. Mm-hmm. He's going to be right there in the train station begging for money. So when you go put a little change in his hand, when you go give him a breakfast sandwich from McDonald's, then you also give him the word there. That's where you meet people. So yeah. it's not just about just physically coming yeah. into the building. It's about right. meeting people wherever they're at, physically and virtually. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. So question, question. I want each of us to describe our mate with one word. Starting one with word. you. Starting with me? <laughs> Starting with me? Yeah. I would say my <laughs> one word is so many words I could pick. Um, <laughs> gosh, I stumped myself. I would probably, <laughs> I would, so many words. I would probably say, um, thoughtful. My wife is very, okay. she's thoughtful. Um, I could be sitting down and I look around, I got a cup of tea. Like, uh, <laughs> like she's, she's, she's thinking about, <laughs> she's think she's thinking about me. And I, I appreciate that. Right, right, right. That's dope. Uh, is that on me now? It's on me now? It's, it's on the other man? Okay. It's on Josh. It's on Josh? What do you think, man? Huh? What do you think? He doesn't have a mate. He doesn't have a mate yet. <laughs> yes, he does. It's we are his mate. <laughs> mommy. It's called Mommy. It's called Mommy. Um, <laughs> it would be milk. Milk. <laughs> Ice cream. Um, geez. Like you're talking about the being stumped thing. Um, my word is understanding. Okay. That's good. Okay. Why, what, what, and pr- pray oh. tell. <laughs> he said pray tell. I think pray you tell. stumped him. <laughs> I know, right? Mm-hmm. I think that I always tell him, I'm like, you know what? I'm not the most easiest person to get along with. So even, even in all my craziness, he's very understanding and he definitely makes allowances for you know, my flaws. 
So I'm thankful okay. for that. Mm -hmm. Uh, my turn. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you like you saw that, right? You saw that, right? Um. Oh man, it's it's like you said, it's a lot. But there, when I think about wife, I think about I think about trust. She's the most trusting individual when it comes to me that I've that I've ever had anyone ever just pour their trust, tr pour their belief, um, and be prepared. I'm supposed to be one word. I'm trying to, it's, but this, it's all, it's one word that says all of this, but I just can't figure Which out is, what it is. Which is, the, and the word is. And the word is. And the word is. Uh, <laughs> loyal. Loyal. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, she is, she's incredibly loyal. Like there's, I, you know, there should be a saying back in the days, I could put you in a room full of naked men and I ain't got to worry about a thing. Not that might be because I'm old and that's something we said when we was old, but my <laughs> wife would be in a room. Anyway, but <laughs> the point what, is, I know that I can, I can leave, I can leave what a analogy. What an analogy. The visual. But, <laughs> Right, a yeah, room right. full of naked right. men. Right. I'm, I'm, not, I'm no, gonna put well, you in a room full of naked men. <laughs> yes, to see what's going on. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh God, is that? <laughs> anyway, like, all right, okay, see. okay. No, okay. No, okay. No, we don't want to. Everybody listening on the on, on the show right now, just stretch your hand this way. Stretch your hand this way. Yes. Touch it towards Caleb right yes. now. Touch, touch, and touch and agree. Touch, yeah. touch and agree, whatever. And, and agree not to touch. I see I'm that hand. I see that hand. <laughs> I, I see that hand. I see that hand. I, I see that hand. I see that hand. Amen. 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 Wow. amen. Um, but yeah, you know, she is an extremely loyal individual, which is something I needed. Absolutely. I knew that. Okay. Batten up fourth. So my word is hard working. There is nothing that he won't do to be able to provide something for his family. If I say, babe, we need to be able to do this, this, and this by this time. This man that took on graphic design projects. And I'm like, where? He, and he's cash after me. I'm like, where did the $500 come from? And he's like, oh, I took on some projects. And I'm like, oh, okay. Like he, awesome. will, he will do whatever it is to make sure that he is providing for us. Um, even if he's going without sleep, he'll be up at the, on the computer two o'clock in the morning, clickety clack, clickety clacking away, just to make sure that we're well taken care of. You know, like we're in the middle of a pandemic. I'm not working because I had a baby. But the flip side of that is, even if I wanted to go back to work, I couldn't because my whole job, my whole team is working from home. Yeah. But we have a five year old who is doing virtual learning, who has exactly major yeah. meltdowns because this is just not mentally and emotionally this is not his jam so he's struggling so there's moments throughout the day that i'm like trying to put out fires when it comes to him and then i have a, a six month old at home so even if i was going if i went to back to work i'd be working from my living room and my clients would hear children screaming so that's not appropriate yeah. Yeah. um and he's making sure that i don't have to wonder where the next thing is going to come from. Are we going to be able to pay on it? Are we going to be able to pay the rent? Like, I don't have to worry about that because he's out here hustling to make sure that everything is taken care of. So, mm -hmm. That's very great. hard working. Yes. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So, what are, what are you most thankful for? I'll start with me. Um, those of our listeners know that I went through a cancer scare this year, had an operation. I am cancer free. Thank God. Yeah. That's what's up. And, um, That's what I've learned, what I've learned is that every day is not promised to you and you ought to live every day like it should last. And. I just don't take tomorrow for granted anymore. I used to, but I just don't take tomorrow for granted. I don't take anything for granted. My wife will tell you, I thank her for it. 
she could do the simplest thing, like bring me, bring me like a pen. I'll, I'll say thank you because I believe that tomorrow's not promised to you, and you should sure. um, cherish cherish the days so because because the thing that you don't get back is time. Time is your most valuable asset. And with time being your va- most valuable asset, you should cherish it. So that's what I've learned um, this year. More so. Mm-hmm. I think that you should, um, that I've learned to cherish the people that are in my life, you know. And um, like this year, I lost my aunt in June. Then I lost my dad a month later. Mm-hmm. And even though I miss them, but I talk to my dad every single day. So I don't have any sorrow and I'm not walking around crying because I know that my relationship with him was so genuine and ongoing that when he wasn't here anymore, I miss some days I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm I got to call dad. And I'm like, oh, but dad's not here anymore. And I literally talked to my dad maybe 10 times a day. But the, the, the walk away is I talked to him when I could, you know, every 10 times I did. So that now I'm not talking to him. I'm okay with it. So I think that, you know, we need to cherish the people that are around us that it's not so devastating when they're not here with us any longer. Right. Right. Um, I think that's one, that's one of the things that I took away from this experience. Um, it's, it's true, bro, because you don't, you, you know, you don't know the next moment. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know um, anything, you know? And so it's funny. I, I, I was, I don't know where I was at. I think I was I was listening to somebody who was talking about being in um there's somebody going to a funeral and, and recognizing how much flowers were in the funeral home. And and mm. uh, they said it was amazing to see all of these wreaths and all of these flowers. And then the question came to them, I wonder if these people had received this many flowers in their whole of their lifetime. And it was that day mm-hmm. that I came home yeah. and brought my wife flowers. I said, you know what? I'm gonna cherish and honor and 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 make a difference in mm-hmm. in you know in and just how we relate and how I love on her because tomorrow, you know what I'm saying? The Bible tells us that it's not promised, but I don't think we live like that. We live like, oh, I got God. You know what I mean? It's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. Everything's going to work. You know what I'm saying? God's got us. You know what I'm saying? We got our backs, but we don't. be here. I think with that Mm -hmm. mindset, and right, we tend to take advantage of. It's like, you know what I'm saying? We take them for granted. And it's like, okay, well, yeah, whatever. And so that that for me has, that has been a wake-up call. You know, because I too have lost people. I mean, we've lost people in our ministry. We lost you know, I know friends and family members that these people are no longer here. And I know somebody that's actually 26 year old died from COVID. 26. Wow. Hmm. wow. You know what I'm saying? That's when that happened. I was like, what? What? I was like, yeah, they, yeah. they're not here anymore. I was like, wow. You know? That's crazy. And so, yeah, you know, that for me, that's definitely what that has taught me. Um, don't you know, buddy? I, for me, um, biggest lesson is um, not sweating the small stuff. Um, because when you start to sweat the small stuff, you become overwhelmed. And if it's yeah. not life or death, then it's small. And I, I, this I learned with being home with my children. Um, my husband, after my husband took on a new job over the summer, which severely shifted his hours, and it was uh, abrupt for me. Wait, sir. And because um, I was used to him being home on Mondays, and 
Then when he went to work at his previous job, then he was leaving the house at 9.30, but he was home by 5.30. Um, Fridays was his late nights and then he was home by 6.30. So it wasn't, it wasn't as stressful. Plus, if I needed him to run home, he would run home literally because he worked 15 minutes walking from our home. So now he was leaving at like 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. And then he's not coming home till like nine o'clock at night. So I'm, I was going more time um, at home by myself. And I started to feel overwhelmed by a demanding baby. And then a five-year-old who was having a hard time adjusting and then he has like meltdowns and then the meltdowns lead to behavior issues because children are emotionally unstable because they don't know how to handle emotions. Emotions are very big to them. They don't necessarily have the words to describe what it is they're going through, which causes a lot of frustration and a lot of lashing out. And so I was here dealing with that the majority of the time by myself and it's not like during this time of COVID that we can just have anybody just in and out your house. Whereas when I had my oldest, if I needed help, just anybody would come and just help me out. Whereas now I got to think about, okay, if somebody comes here and they have COVID and they don't know, then they can infect my whole household. And I have to look mm-hmm. at that. Um, so, but, but because of everything that was happening, I started to feel overwhelmed and my response was just like, yeah, I'm going to pass out. I'm going to cry. I'm going to lay on the floor. I don't know what to do. Just screaming. At the boy. He's screaming at me and I'm screaming at him and the baby's crying. And it was just too much. And I had a conversation with our senior leader who we all typically, um, some of us call dad, papa. And he gave me like that dad moment where, you know, sometimes you have to talk to your father and you could like talk you off the ledge. And he was like, don't be overwhelmed. You have help in the Holy Spirit. And I was like, oh, yeah, I should have thought about that. Um, (laughs) (laughs) It was in my prayer time that one day the Holy Spirit said to me, why are you sweating the small stuff? And I'm like, but this is not small. This is major. He said, no. Is anybody dying? No. Is anybody bleeding to death? No. Is is anybody going to be severely harmed if this continues? And I'm like, no. He was like, then it's small stuff. And I was wow. like, okay. And in that, I've been able to better deal with a lot of the things that are happening. Um, I'm not stressed out. I'm not always crying. <laughs> <laughs> um and I'm, I'm starting to even gain more clarity in certain areas where if the older child is having issues, I'm, I'm able to stay calm as the adult and then help walk him through. Okay, listen, you're frustrated. I get it. How are we going to, how can mommy help you through this frustration? What do you need right now? Do you just need a hug? Do you need me to rub your temples? Like, do we have to breathe together? And it's made a world of a difference. So that's not to say that the meltdowns and the temper tantrums and the things don't happen anymore, but they happen less frequent and they happen for shorter spans of time because I don't sweat the small stuff. Yeah. That's good. Uh-huh. Amen. 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 With that being said, before we close the show, we do this thing called 30 seconds and gone. Uh-oh. I'm going to um, administer the five questions. Those are 36 <laughs> seconds are going on five short questions. Yes or no answers. You can, you can, you can describe the answer. You can do whatever you want with the answer, but they're short. Yes, no. Whatever you want to answer the question. And Wait, so, son. so joy is, um, volunteered okay. for, um, 30 seconds and going. So here we go for the heat, for the heat. <laughs> All right. Question number one. Mm-hmm. Audibles or books? Books. Audibles are lazy. Sneakers or flip flops? What time of year is it? <laughs> good question. Good answer. So that's that, that's the answer. What time of year it's, is it? It's both. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, studs or hoops? I'm more partial to hoops. Okay, hoops it is. Hot cereal or cold cereal? Cold cereal. Unless it's um, porridge. So, so it's cold cereal or hot cereal? Which one is it? It's typically cold cereal unless it's porridge. Unless it's I don't porridge. eat oatmeal. I don't eat farina. Those disgust me. But if somebody What's else eats porridge? porridge, I'm going to eat the porridge. What What's the heck porridge? is porridge? <laughs> oh, man, y'all oh. open up the door. Oh. <laughs> it's this incredible. Is, there's a West Indian <laughs> restaurant not far from you guys on the other side of the train at 270, uh-huh. 174. Uh-huh. If they serve breakfast, go order some porridge. You're welcome. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I only I only heard that in a nursery round porridge. You know, it's, it's porridge. A, yeah, it's a real thing, bro. For real, it's made I of corn. I was surprised, bro. Rain. I was surprised. It's made of what? Cornmeal. Corn hmm. Okay. Hmm. Learn mm-hmm. something new every day. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Favorite, favorite book <laughs> in the Bible. Favorite book in the Bible. The book of Caleb. <laughs> the book. <laughs> I'm going to have to go with um, Old Testament. Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah Why? About, okay, I got to ask you. Why? Something about the prophet Ezekiel. He done went through some things. God yeah. used him physically to show the people something. And I feel like a lot of times my prophetic gift, I, I'm literally being used for the next person. Um, even I had a dream. Um, you go on. How long have I been a part of this church? For a long time. I've been a part of <laughs> I want to say, I think I became a member in 2009, but I started coming in like 2008. And shortly after I became a member, even one of the scriptures in Ezekiel, he gave it to me in a dream where it was talking about how the people will come at Ezekiel like vipers and um, how he was giving him the scrolls to eat. And even though it yeah. seemed like it should have been hard to swallow, they went down like honey. And like that, literally these things were happening in my dream. It was actually before I actually read the book. And um, I was telling um, one of our pastors who happens to be the godfather of um, both of our sons, he said to me, go and read, go and read Ezekiel. I feel like that would actually really speak to you. And so I went and read Ezekiel and I had to just stop and like study that particular scripture for a couple of days. Cause I was just like, I dreamt this, like this was a dream. Like this, this happened. Like I felt everything that happened. Like literally snakes yeah. came out of someone's shirt and bit me. And I was trying to rush to the hospital. Funny enough, God used him as the Holy spirit in my dream and I'm trying to leave the house and he's just standing at the door and he's like feeding me like these uh, Ezekiel crackers, which are usually kind of dry and hard to swallow. And they tasted like he put it in my mouth and I'm like, I don't like those. And he just kept feeding them to me, but they tasted like honey when they went in my mouth. And then he was just like, you don't have to go anywhere. Just, and he's just feeding and feeding. And as he kept feeding to feeding these things to me and I stopped fighting the venom started to come out of my body in the dream and I was able to function and move on. So yeah, wow. Ezekiel is my only, he's my prophet twin. <laughs> <laughs> That's the book that speaks to me. That's However, the book. If you ask me who my two favorite people in the Bible is David and um, Peter. Okay. Okay. They- All right. So let's pass it around the room. Um, what? Um, Yes. Word? Favorite no. favorite favorite book in favorite book in the Bible, Mrs. Thompson. I don't I don't even know. A favorite um, book? Um I think. That's so many. I don't know. Okay. Genesis, Exodus, the numbers <laughs> 
What you said? What? Yeah, Genesis, Exodus, Genesis, Numbers, Deuteronomy. There's only six to six. One. Pick ones. <laughs> my fa- give an explanation as to why that is my favorite thing. So. Oh, no. No, no, no you don't. Know, you just say, you just pick, pick a no Bible. Pressure. Pick a book. <laughs> Say the glossary. Who cares? The glossary. <laughs> no, my favorite, my that, favorite book in the Bible is Joshua. That's my favorite book in the Bible. Joshua, okay. I would say Joshua, second to Matthew. Nah, I would say Joshua. I have to pick three. I'm gonna do three. Okay, I got three points. I'm gonna say <laughs> Joshua. I'm gonna say Matthew, and I'm gonna say Galatians. Mm. Okay. Okay. All right, so my favorite, I got a lot, but my favorite book of the Bible as of today is Romans. Romans? Yeah, Romans. Because it, just, it shows you Paul's journey, but it also shows you the journey of the people of Rome and where they were, where they were, and what God was still preparing for them. It's, it's, it's really right a book. Right. Right. Okay, can we circle back, Mrs. Thompson? <laughs> she told you to get away. <laughs> Will you stop chewing? What's that? Um, initially, I was going to say Matthew, too. Okay. Cool. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It no is. Cats and dogs? Cat, say, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and dogs of all ages. Yeah. We have a special message for all of you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy 2021. Yeah, man. Happy sure. 2021. Happy 2021. Yeah. We made it. And um, <laughs> looking so forward nice. to the next show we're going to do is we're going to do a season two recap, getting ready for season three. Yeah. yeah and sure. um, keep tuning in. As we say every in every show, keep God first in everything you do. Everything. See you next time on the Church Sound Church Podcast. Deuces, y'all. I want to send a big shout out to our central workers in yeah. the church body. Yeah. Our central workers, yeah, 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 yeah. media team. Yeah, yeah. Media yeah. teams. Mm-hmm. They are the church's essential yeah. workers. Yeah, yeah. Without yeah. whom, there would be no, no way right. the word would go forth online.